What is good, everybody? We are headed to LA to film Nate Shaw from 100 Thieves Sneaker Collection. He has some sneakers valued over $15,000 in his collection as well. While we're going to check out the 100 Thieves compound with all their streaming setups. It's absolutely insane. Let's go ahead and head to LA right now. <laughs> So we're here at Nate Shot. I wanted to get a little insight on uh, some of the stuff he's into. Sneakers, you kind of have dabbled in in the past. You made some content on it. I know you're probably not you know, buying every sneaker that comes out. Wanted to bring some of those shoes here, talk about some of your interests. So we brought some stuff today. Yeah, absolutely. So my background with sneakers was, I'll never forget it. I went into like a finish line when I was 10 years old and I saw a pair of like Jordans that just, I, I couldn't stop looking at them. It was probably the first time in my life where I looked at Something like a sneaker was like, I have to have this. Obviously, you don't have any money when you're a kid. Didn't have money for a long time even then. So as I got older and was playing Call of Duty, you know, there were a lot of things that I really loved outside of video games. Yep. So I just started making videos about all that and hopefully the audience would follow me. I'm like, these kids are the same age as me. They probably feel the same way about video games aren't the only thing I'm interested in. Yep. So I started buying sneakers and unboxing them. So I brought just a couple sneakers that for me throughout the years were kind of like like a definitive moment. I've got these pair of custom Jordan 1s. Okay. So these were done up after we won That's the sick. first uh, Valorant Major. So the, Val the first Valorant Major was a really big deal for us because it's a game that was produced by Riot. They make League of Legends, which is the biggest game in the entire world and has been for like the last decade. It was like a personal, uh, really like sentimental moment because when you expand into a new game, you've got so many teams like coming for that number one spot yep. and it can be a very defining moment for a brand if you can position yourselves as like the championship team. Yep. So after we won that event, it was just like a huge weight off my shoulders and like a, a, like a very rewarding personal accomplishment. Uh, the fact that the team here put together a winning team and yep. so we had these sneakers made. Got the 100 Thieves embroidery. I don't know what I got on here. Jesus, what is that? <laughs> I haven't, I don't wear these. I've just yeah. had them sitting in the closet. Who made these? This is actually good quality leather and stuff on here. Oh man, you know, I know there's like a couple popular Instagram shoe surgeon. Su like shoe surgeon. Yeah. I've chopped it up with him before. I don't believe he did these. I, I really don't remember the name. Yeah. I wish yeah. I did, but I wasn't like man in the project itself. Yeah. No, there's some good like leather on here, good quality materials and stuff. Those yeah, are cool. that's a cool story on those. Exactly. So this was I'll, I'll never I'll never get rid of these, and they even put like Nate shot in the sole or the insole. Yeah, 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 the insole. insole. Jesus <laughs> Christ, dude. I'm out of practice. Hey, you know the models. You got all that. You're good. Yeah. So next up, I'm trying to see what order I should go in because these are the ultimate hype beast sneaker from 2016, 17 era. Exactly. Yeah. And the reason why I brought these is because this is really what got me into like unboxing sneakers. Yep. And I know if you guys are purists in sneaker culture, this is gonna be like the most hype beast uh, purchase somebody could have ever made. And they're all beat to shit because at the time when I bought them, I just had no idea what Yeezy was gonna turn into, yep. but I love them. Because nowadays they have like a million different versions. At that time though, I just, they were so unique to any other silhouette of sneaker yep. that I had seen on the market. Yep. And it was like, holy shit, these are incredible. Yeah, this is really where unboxing sneakers on my YouTube channel really began. You know what's funny about these is right now, if you have these, this is not considered hype beast. This is actually considered, you're kind of like a little bit of an OG in the space. Because now, like I, I have a pair of these, my buddy's actually gifted them to me. These are like not something that people like, I don't make content on them because people don't really care about them anymore. Like the younger kids now that are into it, they don't even really like know much about these. They just know about the new stuff. So like, these are kind of more like you're setting yourself on the OG spin. That's like five, six years ago this came out. Hey man, so, I'll take it. Yeah, that's yeah, good. And I, I mean, I, this was my favorite pair. I bought a pair of these off of Craigslist and got scammed, paid 600 bucks and they're fake. Um, so like, I had to make whole videos on like how I got scammed, this and that. But they, I, this is like iconic for me too. Like that was, I was into shoes, but like that, the drive that I had to get this pair was like none that I've ever had before. Bro, I'm glad that I'm not the only one because at the time, that was right when Adidas was dropping like the Ultra Boost 1.0. And again, same thing. They made a million, I really wish that Adidas didn't like drive that right stake out. into the ground and say, we're gonna make a million pairs of these in a trillion different colorways. Cause I actually thought the Ultra Boost were like an incredible new silhouette that just gave a different style to like a running like jogger. Yep. That's really where unboxing sneakers started for me. And then I sort of ventured out, started unboxing like Jordans, New Balances, every brand yep. you can think of. Do you remember how much you paid for those? 
Oh man, that's a great question. I think it was probably around like $700, $800 at the time. Uh, it might even been around like a grand. I, I don't know. I feel like I maybe even got them at retail just so long ago. Yeah, no, they're sitting around like new, like thousand bucks now. So still about the same price. Probably be higher than that. Yeah, I mean, used, I, we, how much did we get our pair for? 900 bucks, I think? Around 800 900 bucks for a used pair. So maybe it's a little bit more, but yeah. People don't want, they're not buying these, they want all the new stuff. I, think I totally understand. The reason they're down now is because I think they're gonna re-release. Oh yeah, they're planning to re-release them. Yeah, I did see that. I've seen that a, a couple times over the years, like, but I was wondering when it was finally gonna happen. Yeah. But I don't resell sneakers anyways. Like if I'm buying them, it's kind of like, you know, watches. I'll never forget where I was in my life where I bought a sneaker that I hang on to yep. for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Uh, but time will tell. So yeah. next pair, uh, again, in the hype beast fashion, I didn't actually buy these. This was really cool and the story why these are so special is because the first year 100 Thieves, our company started growing, we started hiring more people. And I think at the time we had probably 15 to 20 uh, underneath the organization. And for my birthday, the entire company uh, filmed like a surprise video where they gifted this to me. That's awesome. Yeah, so I mean, I'm from Chicago. I was a little late for the Jordan era. I was born in 92, so the the, the best years when I was like zero to five years old. Yep. Uh, so obviously, you know, huge supporter of Chicago Bulls. I watched them like all throughout my childhood and with Lonzo Ball now on the team. It's even better. That's so, a little hint to what's coming, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, bro. No, you, you can't say enough about the off-white Jordan ones. This is probably like a, this era of sneakers, the most iconic. These are like up to 15 grand now. They're they're up there. After Virgil passed, they went way up. So they were like two grand at the time, probably when you got these. They're like 15 now. So, bro, you ever watch like what's that auction show on PBS where they go around the traveling? Yeah, yeah. Antique Roadshow. Road show Antique Roadshow. That's how I feel when you just told me that these yeah, are probably yeah, up to 15. Because yeah. I wore these like, maybe like six months ago and my boy Hector from Optic, yeah. he sent me a message, he's like, yo, what the fuck are you doing walking around those things? You're gonna get robbed. I'm yeah. like, what do you mean, bro? <laughs> no, these are like 15, $2,000 in stock yeah. X. Yeah, nope, 15K now if you want a pair, so. But yeah, I mean, besides the hype, I, at least I have a good background story. No, these are no, these are really good. I've we've I've had a tons of pair of these, and I paid really low, paid really high, and uh, these are ones that are staples. And it's less like high beast stuff. It's like that's actually an iconic shoe with Virgil's first one ever. So right. Well, yep. th this is, I'm glad to know these things. Yes. Next Warm. up is not really a special pair of shoes, but nice. bro, these are the beaters right now. Most comfortable golf shoe I've ever worn. These are just a regular pair of Foot Joys that I got in a pro shop. And I figured, you know, you and I in my office, we were talking a little bit about golf and how you've been playing. Uh, I just think golf is by far and away my favorite hobby aside from video games. Yep. And uh, I played a lot when I was a kid, wasn't any good, never had lessons, but my dad would always bring me out to like a municipal course, pay 12 bucks and let you play all day. Yep. And I didn't realize how much I loved golf because I played freshman year of high school and then I had to get a job. So I quit after that first year, wasn't really golfing as much, moved to LA and kind of rekindled some friendships with some people that I met through the gaming community uh, back in the Major League Gaming days. Yep. So one of my best friends, uh, Rich, he actually represents a bunch of clients. He reps like Tim the Tatman, Closey at WME. Huh. Uh, him and I just hit it off uh, over the years and been golfing together, hanging out, and became best friends through this beautiful game. So if you don't play golf, I'm telling you, Everybody thinks it's a very expensive sport, and it can be, just with yeah. anything. Any yep. hobby, any sport can be expensive if you really try to make it so. Yep. But I promise you, watching golf on TV, if you don't know anything about it, I agree, it's the most boring right, thing yeah. in the world. But after you get into the mix and start following golfers' careers and you really have people to like root for, that's when golf gets really interesting to watch. But then playing it is completely different. Yep. You're out there with the boys, having a couple drinks underneath the sun, Nobody's around you except for your group, and I just think it is by far and away the greatest sport that has ever been made. Yeah, and it's something you can play as you get older because certain sports you can't extend that out. And uh, I, in high school, I tried out for the golf team, didn't make it, and so I, but I kind of kept after it. And I think it is one of those things. Doesn't matter your age or whatever. It's a skill that you can hone in on and not have to like rely on being super physically fit to do it. Well, good. look at John Daly. This man just had like stomach cancer, and he smokes like two packs of cigarettes a day. The guy does not drink water. He drinks like 10 Diet Cokes a day. And that man is still whacking that ball around and scoring pretty well. So you got you got one more for us? I got one more for you. Actually, I would be remiss if I just didn't bring out the Air Force Ones oh, as well. Yeah, classic, white Air Force Ones. And the only reason why I bring these out is because 
these things in the last year and a half have sort of changed my approach to sneakers. Like I used to buy all the hype drops. I'd pick up a new pair of sneakers every week, especially when I was tapped into YouTube every day. I wear these, I don't wear any shoes in my closet besides my Air Force ones. Yeah, and if they're even harder to get now. That's the problem. You can't even go to a mall and get them, at least in Atlanta anymore. They're, re they're sold out, so you have to go to the resale stores and pay 150 for them. Yeah. yeah. But still, 150 compared to any of the other ones, it's not that bad of a deal for how much you can wear it. Yeah, 100%. I think the biggest thing for me why I want to talk about it is like, as you get older and you get busier and you, you know, you got a lot of things to deal with throughout your day, stress, family, I mean, anything. Removing any and eliminating any decisions that I have to make in the morning. Yeah. It's like the best thing ever, bro. I throw on a pair of like 501 Levi's. I don't have to worry about nothing. Yeah, and they look good still. They yeah. well, yeah. You can wear it with most fits. And then the crown jewel. The grand finale right here. The crown jewel of my collection. <laughs> the original ZO2's Big Baller brand signed you got the authenticity sticker. I got the key still to the lock box. You plug this in, it lights up. <laughs> That's great. I'm telling you, and I still believe this to this day. The reason why I bought these, one, because I was just watching the entire ball family at Chino Hills. That was when like high school basketball was yep. really thriving. And I think that was a definitive time for basketball, just like sports content and media in general. And I love these shoes and I'm the biggest Lonzo Ball supporter and super fan. I just think that when it's all said and done, if he can avoid injuries, which he hasn't done a great job of the last couple years, he's gonna be a Hall of Famer in my mind. Hey, and then you're gonna have these. And you're gonna be like, look, I'm an original. I bought these at release. This is what I'm saying. So when these came out, I don't know if you guys remember, they took a while to get, like when people bought them and they, it was like a pre-order essentially and it took a long time for people to get them. I assumed you waited a good bit for these. It took like, Six to nine months, I think. Yeah, and maybe it, even a year. Yeah, it was a long time. And I mean, if people wanted them, they got them. The retail was high, like because this one signed. I think it was like six hundred. I think the regular was like three hundred or something like that. And uh, now you're an OG who's got the signed shoe. I um, try to get that now. It's probably probably tough. I don't even know what the resale market is on these. Are you a Haw uh, Hawks fan then? Do you do you watch a lot of basketball? Uh, I watch a, a fair bit, not too much. We go to a couple Hawks games a year. So okay. I'm a baseball person. I watch a lot of baseball, golf. I follow basketball a little bit, but this is a good ending of the sneakers and uh we're gonna do a little bit of a tour as well of the uh, 100 thieves compound this is really cool to be here and uh and see this i've seen it in videos pictures when you guys first got it so uh let's go ahead and cut to that yeah let's start at the front i'm gonna give you guys a full experience let's go all right guys we're at the 100 thieves compound today with nate shot here to talk some sneakers we're gonna take a tour of the uh, 100 thieves compound thank you for having us and uh i'm excited to see this place it looks cool yeah of course brother i appreciate you dropping by man my favorite thing is to bring guests around kind of just showing the world that i've been living in for the last five years we found the company in 2017 we moved in here at the beginning of 2020 right when COVID was that 2019 or 2020 uh beginning of 2020 okay so so we literally spent like six months like retrofitting this place for ourselves or you know bringing it up to speed for our, all of our needs and then the first month we got in here i'll never forget the day when tom hanks and rudy gobert yeah, that yeah. was like the first day where covid got real across yeah. the world the next day we sent everybody home so we didn't get to use it for like a year and a half but it is a great space we're finally back in but yeah this is where the magic happens i guess i feel like i should get you guys some chris style with like yeah, yeah, mtv yeah. cribs yeah so yeah, this is like the foyer, the foyer. Uh, this is where we've done a couple retail drops. We had a collab with Attack on Titan that we did uh, like four or five, six months ago. And the other retail experience that we did was when we launched our always online apparel collection called Foundations. Yep. It's kind of comparable, maybe not you know, reputation wise, but like Essentials with Fear of God and uh, Jerry Lorenzo, that yep. was, we just want to give everybody like a foundational piece of clothing that wasn't overbranded and you can wear at any point in any given yep. setting, however it suits your lifestyle. So uh, at the front, we've got uh, all the trophies that we've won over the years. This was a really big one for this team uh, in that room right now, it's the LCS Championship. League of Legends has been around for over, well over a decade mm -hmm. and still the biggest esport in the world, but predominantly is like a very, South Korea and China are by far and away like the best performers when the world championships happened. But in North America, we were a new team that came in late. And so we were coming up against teams that have been around for like 10 years plus. 
So winning that championship when nobody thought we could was a very big deal. This was uh, the Valorant first strike tournament, the first major for Valorant. This is from Mr. Savage, uh, Fortnite DreamHack champion. And then these are probably my favorite. These are the CDL Call of Duty majors that we won two years ago in Black Ops 4. I come from Call of Duty, so yep. when those boys like brought us home a ship, we got banners up there for them. This was like, I'm getting chills just looking at and yeah. remembering these moments. That's awesome, those are crazy. We got the boardroom. You don't need to go in there. Uh, that's Business where the stuff. meetings happen. Yeah. We've got the uh, Gucci 100 Thieves collaborative backpack. That's so sick. Congrats yeah, right. on that collaboration, that was awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, that was a big deal for us because it was just one of those moments where a brand that's been around for over like 100 years, one of like the most recognizable brands in the world, they say, hey, we wanna do a collaboration with you. That's crazy. It's just like that, like the validation that it gave us to know that we were onto something and doing something that other people would take a notice. It just meant a lot. And then uh, we went to New York and did a custom pair of Nike Air Maxes. I got to build out everything you hear, uh, everything you see here. So we got like the corduroy, the red leather, um, the insoles, everything. So those are those are really cool. Yeah, man. I uh, totally. I had never done something like that before, and I don't know about you, but. I get decision fatigue, like sometimes I hate making decisions. That was a very overwhelming experience. So you pick all these materials and you're just hoping to God that it comes out the way that you envisioned it. Yeah. And they killed it. No, that looks great. I love the corduroy, the red. And the red and the, the white and the black, that's your guy's staple color. 100%. And then you even have like the 100 Thieves embroidery on the back. So, and on the tongue, yeah. Oh great. yeah, they, uh, they killed that. I want to say the next time that you're in LA and you need anything at all, we have this production studio lights turn on uh let me see here. i bet i can figure this out there's only a few buttons there look at that okay i got the set on so they have this done up i think for brooks new podcast that hasn't been announced yet but we film podcasts in here like sit down like documentary style segments for our esports teams and mm -hmm. the journey that they're on it was a really big investment when we first opened the studio but it's been great because LA, there's so many creators here 24 seven. So anytime anybody needs like a little extra push on production, we'll invite them out here and accommodate them as, as best as we can. Yeah. When this screen turns on too, this is like a 6K. Oh really, that's insane. Yeah, I'm t let me, I got I didn't realize that that was a screen. That makes oh, yeah. it even 10 times crazier. Oh, Something, that, that, that looks sick. <laughs> Dude, they're, they're gonna kill me. I'm gonna break this thing. <laughs> I'll put a clip up when Ooh. you guys had something on it. No, I can do a green screen, let's see. <laughs> We're gonna try a green screen. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, guys, look what I'm dealing with here. I, I can't figure this out. <laughs> That's very complicated. I'm like a fucking caveman in here. You know, streamers, depending on where you live, you know, that's like their computers are their personal ATMs, right? That's where they make their money. So whenever somebody visits, we have like four of these streaming pods with like dual PC setups. Plug in like a USB stick with your OBS settings and stream away. Remodeling these a little bit so that they don't feel like jail cells. When we first opened the compound, our CFO, He's obviously very stringent about spending. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, nobody's gonna come use these things if they don't look incredible. Like if we're gonna yep. spend any money, it should be like 100 these branded pods that creators are stoked to use. Because yep. you know, if that's in the background of their stream, people are gonna take notice. Yep. We got some work to do. Hey, but get the job done. Yeah, you got something there now. Got some moments throughout the years of 100 Thieves. That's iconic right there. Yeah, that was a big deal. And then, uh, we've got four of these rooms. I would have brought you into the League of Legends room at the front uh, next to the trophy, but they're practicing right now. But when all these PCs are on and we got the lights on, this room looks like exactly what it should. Yeah. This is where the COD team practices every day. They're actually at a major championship in New York. We beat FaZe Clan yesterday. Wow. And they've been like the number one team for the last two years. ATL FaZe. Nobody thought, yeah, ATL. Sorry, brother. ATL, I know. <laughs> but nobody thought we were going to win that match and we beat the living shit out of them. Hey, congrats. That, I love the competitive Call of Duty because back in the day, we talked about off camera, optic, phase, all that was huge, and uh, you were OG optic. That was that was the wave back then, and so it's crazy. Now you're in the space and competing and all that again. Well, I just love seeing people like you that sort of originated in like the early MW2 days, find their own lane and carve out like a, their own piece of the pie away from Call of Duty. Yeah. Like, I genuinely believe if you comb through the entire gaming industry and any creators that are on YouTube, I bet, you know, like three to five, maybe even 10% of them in some way or another interacted with like the early YouTube Modern Warfare 2 days. Yeah. I could take you upstairs if you want, but basically that Call of Duty room we have there, that was the Fortnite training room above it. Same, same setup. We have like, you, you guys actually might like this. There's like a... 
15 computers all around the room, and especially since COVID, we couldn't have people in here. They're all remote editing bays. Wow. So they, the editors are at home and there's no input delay. They're editing on those PCs in that's, real time. That's actually crazy. Yeah. So when you walk in there, you just see the, the screens flying around in Premiere or Final Cut and it's... That's wild. The kitchen. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot of white around here, but like we wanted it to be as clean uh, aesthetically as possible. If I could go back and do it again, I definitely would have added some warmth, you know, yeah. some wood tones in here somewhere because if you're here all day, it can, in a way, feel like I need to go out and see some sunlight. But for what it is, I think it's great. This is a very small thing, but a big thing to me. We have like triple, quadruple uh, filtered water. Ice cold out of this tap. Got still and sparkling. I hate sparkling water, but you know, people like it, so we have it. This is my office. Normally I have the blinds closed because I'm a little introverted and like to have my privacy. But yeah, what you see is what you get, man. Um, just some like memorabilia for my career. The old school YouTube play button. I'm sure you have one of those. I have the 100K old school one. Okay. I got the recent million. Uh, but yeah, we got like old school. This is like the first big term I won, Cod XP. That's really what let me quit my job at McDonald's and pursue this full time. A little, little hype stuff in here, you got a bear brick. Nice thousand percent here. Yeah, that was a gift from my girl. I actually don't know much about bear bricks and you know, like cause and all that, yeah. but I, I think it's a nice touch. Yeah, I guess I do have the cause too. I, I do have some hype stuff, but you know, if somebody gives me a gift, I tried to put it somewhere. But yeah, this is pretty much it. We got the X Games gold medal from 2014 at Cog That was the first jersey that we made. We wanted to be different, so we came with a baseball jersey. Just never could understand why in esports specifically, if you follow it, why well, everyone decided we were gonna use like these polyester, synthetic, like paintball jerseys. Like motocross, yeah, that, yeah. So we wanted to bring something special. And even this year, our jerseys are inspired by like a, a rugby polo kit. It doesn't look as I planned on stage because all the players want to wear short sleeves, yep. especially keyboard mouse, but the long sleeve is fire. All right, guys, I think the best way to wrap this up would be out by uh, Nate Shot's car here. So if you know on the channel, I'm a uh, Porsche fan. I have a GT3 RS, and I noticed this as we pulled up. It's a new 992 Turbo S. Uh, explain the choice on that. It's a great choice of car and color, Chalk. Well, I appreciate that, brother. I literally just had the car washed, and we've been locked out of the garage of the house that we just moved into. And for whatever reason, wherever I'm parking in that driveway, these birds are just going gotcha. to work on this thing. Yeah. But I do have, like, uh, you know, coding. exactly. I've got everything, all the bells and whistles. So I've always wanted a Porsche, and I finally found a dealer. Uh, shout out to Momentum Porsche in Houston. They gave me an allocation and went through the building process. I mean, you know it better than I do, but it, it was unbelievably overwhelming because, <laughs> yeah. like, you get the base model of like the Turbo S or the GT3 RS. They kill you with the options. Yep. So I figured if I was gonna buy a car like this, I'm gonna, you know, get everything that I want. Yep. So I went with the chalk. Uh, I think it's pretty unique. You know, it's like you have Audi with the Nardo Gray, yep. and I've been seeing a lot more chalk nowadays. So I'm hoping they might so my yeah. resale value goes up. I did everything high gloss black all around, uh, just on the intakes. That's great. The spoiler, um, everything, even with the font finishes, uh, the badge, everything is high gloss black. And so I, when, it, when we finally got it in the States, cause I had to wait like nine months for this damn thing. Yep. I uh, painted the wheels high gloss black just to make it uniform and love this car. And you spec with carbon ceramic grates. That's a good uh, good option to do. Of course, man. Like I, if you got the you got the spec, you have to spec everything. Yeah, and so on. And then I even did the clear tail lights as yep, well. And then on the inside, I just did red accents uh, to match the hundred thieves uh, lifestyle. You know what I mean? I was really spooked on whether I should do the all red on the uh, speedometer. I was combing through forms for like weeks before I had a, like my my drop dead date to make the decision. We're like, you're not gonna wanna look at that all day. You're not gonna like it. I love it. Yeah. I'm really glad that I did it. You got like guard red stitching all throughout. So I'm in LA, so you don't really put a lot of miles on it anyways, but it's comfortable enough where I can drive it every day. And when I want some speed, I can push it. It's, I, I love this car. Yeah, no, this is a great option for daily. Well, speed, these are insanely fast. I think that's a perfect way to, uh, to wrap this up. Thank you for having us here at the compound, showing us some shoes. And uh, it was nice to finally meet you. Oh, yeah. I've been watching Nate Shot for a long time now. And uh, we talk about month. the Royal Oak. Oh, we dude. didn't. We'll, we'll no, cut in a section. I'm just totally kidding. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next one. Peace.